stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're here taping at the Hollywood Museum in the heart of Hollywood on Highland Avenue. Our guests are actress Bai Ling and director Terry Hanauer. Actress, model, Bai Ling was born and raised in China. Her acting career started in Chengdu when she was 14 years old and continued on her arrival in the United States. Bai attended New York University's film school, studied with Lee Strasberg, and uh, became a U.S. citizen in 1999. She's garnered award after award for her acting. Um, she's worked with top directors. She's experienced a reality TV. She's had celebrity rehab. What else? Uh, what brought you actually to California from New York? Well, I think it's my dream. It's Hollywood. And it's beautiful, like when I walk into this museum, I just see Marion Monroe's exhibition. I just feel. <laughs> It, it somehow makes you feel like you're in a dreamland, in a beautiful fantasy land with a lot of beautiful artists together and making beautiful art to satisfy us. I think when I was a child, actually I was laying on the grass in the summertime, right, in southwest of China with my grandmother, because in the summertime we don't have uh, air conditioning. We're just lying on the grass to get the heat off. Uh, we can't stay in the house too hot. Too hot? Yeah, we just had a little, like this sheet on the grass, so we're lying there. I was seeing so many stars so far. I said, Grandma, I said, so many stars. I said, how many are they? I said, I want to be the star. And she said, well, you are the one. You are one of the stars. I said, really? I said, which one? Then she said, look at the brightest one. What a great grandmother. I know, right? I was like, for a little child, I just have to find, oh, I'm the star, the brightest one. So that's, that's so I, nice. That's such a great story. And you have stars tattooed on your Oh my angle. God, you noticed that. <laughs> I did. I have the moon and stars landing Isn't on my feet. Isn't that fabulous? So you carry your grandmother with you. Yes. That's and really she, wonderful. Her spirit, because she's so generous, so she's so um, pure and innocent, always very um, kind and giving and, and believe. So that makes me feel like uh, there's a dream for me. There's a big star I should be. So the places come is Hollywood. That's why. So that's why you became. But but you actually got to New York. How did you get to New York first? I was invited by NYU Film School. Oh, that's right. Yes, that was a great thing. Yeah, I was uh, actually I studied. I had a scholarship with uh, Lee Strasberg. Uh huh. But I left. Do you oh, know you? why I left? Hmm. Because I, I I at that time I have zero skill at English. I, I was going to ask you about your English. Yes. Uh, actually, they asked us to do a play, right? I guess my homework was uh, Glass Menagerie, mm -hmm. the old play. Mm -hmm. So I was like, um, I memorized it, I did it, but I don't understand anything. After I did it, the, the um, teacher said, she's a master. I said, what mean master? She said, go look at the dictionary. I said, master, I figured out. Then I thought, hmm, maybe I don't need to study. All I need to learn is English. Oh, that was it? Oh, because English came to you pretty easily, didn't it? Not very easy. Actually, you don't even you know. know Eng you know. I, I used to have these uh, words on my wall. Like, it's like an ocean of words. I said, there's no way I can remember all of them. Oh, it's really difficult. But you speak Mandarin. Yes. Do you speak, still speak? Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> At the time, I have to tell you a little story. I was in New York City, right? I live in uh, uh, Manhattan. So one time, it was winter time, I go down to take the subway. Then there's a homeless person s sitting there. And he was asking me for money. I was looking at I could not speak English. I said, if I would have your English skill, if I would have your passport, I can conquer the world. 
I have nothing. He has everything, but he's asking for money. I was like, wow, I didn't understand anything. But you had a really good idea of what was going on for a teenager. I mean, you were very young right. and, and carrying on and in a new country. And we talked about all these awards that you've gotten. One of the awards, and you probably won't remember, was from the Hollywood Women's Press Club, the Golden Apple. Yes, and yes. I was on that committee. Wow, and we you chose you. Me? Yes, we chose really? you as one wow, of Wow, thank you so much. So it's so great to see how far you've come. You got an Asian Oscar for, for that Dumplings. film Dumplings. Tell us a little bit about that because that was a big thing for you, wasn't it? Yeah, I got not only Asian Oscar, I got four most important acting awards in Asia through the one role. Throughout Asia, right? Yeah, throughout the world. Actually, the director cast me. I, I, when I read the script, I say, like, oh, oh, what do you want me to play? And nobody knows because right now you see her, she become a character, but she could be existing like a thousand years ago, a thousand years later. It's such oh. my mystical and fantastic, sexy, confident, all kinds of color I give to her, become a character really far from my real life. I was going like, to say, how did you research it all? Actually, I didn't. I think that most time, I, I think for actors, because you're taking care of the emotion journey of the uh, characters. Uh -huh. So that's from within. I always search within. It's like a sensitivity because I lived through life. I was 14, I was in Tibet in the army, three years. I know. So I traveled to this world, I don't know a word of English, so I, I'm a star here. So <laughs> I feel all this life experience and taught me so many things about my heart, my spirit. Oh, so that was part of your character with dumplings? No, I have nothing to do with what I just talked about. You have to see it. It's far beyond you what you ever imagine. But I'm just saying from the sense of my my internal um, power, spirit, and heart, and also I believe I have a gift as an actress. Mm -hmm. I just knew, like I never really learned acting. Like I went to Lee Strasberg, I finally left, because I know I got the tool. Because you I, know how to do it, I see. It's just easy for me. I think it's a gift we but, all have. But you worked with fantastic directors, Oliver Stone, and George Lucas, and Ang Lee, and Jodie Foster. Were they helping you? You say you have this natural ability. Mm -hmm. Did they give you the right kind of direction that made you do what you should be doing? I'm very lucky that I'm cast by all these great artists. I know. I worked with all the actors like Richard Gere for my first leading role. I know. That's what you're so well known. People yeah. t look at you and they talk. What was the name of that film? Red Corner. Yeah, mm -hmm. Red Corner. I got Discover, uh, disc a breakthrough, breakthrough performance from uh, National Board of Review. For, for the for, for the Red film. Corner, yeah. and then they also know you from The Crow. Yes, because I think uh, all these directors or even actors, I'm lucky that they trust me. They actually, none of them really give me any direction. They say, Biling, we just want you to show us what you're going to do. Oh, they and do? every time I say, really? I said, I just do it. I say, perfect. So I had a lot, the very, I'm very lucky they gave me this free uh, land or stage to dance as when, a performer. When you were working with Richard Gere, did, were you taking English lessons at that time? Oh my God, I could not. Like even today, <laughs> I don't understand repentant attitude. I play such a repentant attitude. Such an intelligent lawyer, right? The words is very complicated. So I was like, uh, memorized the words. I couldn't understand my English. Literally zero skill at that time. At that time, I have to act very confident. But everybody thinks that I I portrayed beautiful lawyer. I know, confident. I know, and also someone that was like he didn't know. What right, you right. were about, right? Yeah, yes, like very. I give her many layers as a woman. Where did you film that? Um, in Los Angeles. Oh, it was all we built up the old set near the uh, LX, uh -huh. in the Marina del Rey area. And tell me a little bit about the Crow too. Yeah, Crow actually I did not know become a, such a special, a kind of sad but beautiful movie because of what happened to Brandon Lee. And right. I tell you a little story. I was uh, cast in a role actually in the beginning. Um, I went to audition, right? I would just have no makeup, I would have jeans, all of it. I see all the girls have rings, everything. I said, what is this? So I read it, I thought, probably All the people not for who me. were auditioning with right. you? <laughs> so I left, I was moving, my agent like, couldn't find me, and finally come to my house. He said, Bailey, your phone's unplugged, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm moving. He said, they want you to go call back. I don't even understand what means call back. He said, I want to see you. He said, can you please go buy a dress, put some makeup on? <laughs> but was this your agent? Yeah, yeah. So how did you get an agent so easily? Uh, not easy. Not so, easy. <laughs> so I was in New York, so I don't understand nothing. Actually, I had a friend who, who loves Chinese culture. 
and, and he know I'm an actress. He said, you want to be an actress uh, here? I said, sure, but I, I don't speak language. Uh, so he knows the casting director. They cast off Broad of Jinyu Ensemble Studio Theater. I heard Mario Monroe, Dustin Hoffman, Robert De Niro right, was there. Yeah. So I got the leading role in the Off Broadway show. You know the funny thing. That's what I was going to ask you. You were actually on Broadway or off Broadway, off Broadway show, and I did Broadway show. And what did you do if you weren't speaking English very well? Oh my well. God, it's so <laughs> scary. I, I look, open the curtain, I see all the Caucasian faces. I forgot my lines, and I was so brave because I was on the stage. I told the actor, whatever I'm going to speak, you have to be slow. Otherwise, I cannot catch. Right. So I don't understand. The rest of time, I'm standing. I have no clue whatsoever is happening. When come to my lines, they, by, they were taught to me, I start to talk. But I really don't understand. But I think my power a, 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 as an actor yeah. is the truth and honesty that I'm able to transform or to express from my heart. People just, I break their heart. So you just went boom just like went. that. You just did it. Yeah. <laughs> Like the crow, so. I was wondering how you could be on broad uh, off on the stage like that. So yeah, that was I did great. That actually. Um, Terrence Malick. Oh, Terrence Malick. My yeah, that's a nice. uh, uh, friend and director. He cast me for a Broadway show. That's what I was talking about. Right. Terrence Malick. But uh, we only did a workshop in BAM. Uh. They had Andrew Vida, the Polish director, and we worked together like intensively for a month. But, but BAM is great. Too. Yeah, yeah so yes. that was fantastic. So tell me a little bit about the crow. Mm -hmm. And then I want to ask you about pieces of my dream. Okay, so the crow. Um, um, it's kind of sad now I think back because Brandy is such a beautiful young man, right. and so much hope and success ahead of him. So one of the funny things we were sitting next to each Finally, I got cats right. Basically, I got the dress. Oh yeah, because you can't play it right. Can, <laughs> Sorry. The said, yeah, the director said, you're good yesterday, but can you do something more, like more extreme, like there's some mysterious power inside her, like she could be putting you to sleep? So I did that. He was like, fantastic. So anyway, when I was uh, on, on the makeup room with Brandon Lee sitting next to me, and I didn't know who he was, right? He's playing computer games. We <laughs> took like two hours to do makeup. He said, oh, I heard you're Chinese. I said, yeah. He said, I'm Chinese. I said, you're kidding me? You look so white. He <laughs> said, yeah. He said, my father's Chinese. I said, who's your father? He said, my father's Bruce Lee. I was like, I have no real. I said, do you know who he is? I said, no, I have no clue. He oh, was you like, didn't know from China? Listen, he was so disappointed. He was like, you don't know? Wow, you're probably one of the only person in the world doing right. that. So I feel bad. I called my friend to New York. I was in North Carolina. I said, who is Bruce Lee? Then my friend said, the name in Chinese, Li Xiaolong. Oh. So next day I come to say, I say, I know who your father is. He said, no wonder. I said, because I don't speak English. I never learned his English name. So I did not know. And he probably was surprised at the, the Chinese name that you came up with. I know, Li Xiaolong. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He was like, how come you don't know my yeah, father? Yeah, exactly. So after uh, what happened, I just feel like um, that's what we're talking about. Film is such a... It's so strong film for Film is such a beautiful format, beautiful uh, magic uh, human beings are invented because he's not there, but he's there forever. You know, yeah, exactly. at that moment we capture, no matter how right. it's happening to your life, but that moment is right. captured so perfectly right. at the moment it's supposed to be. And at the moment, before we leave, you were the first Asian woman ever to be on Playboy. Cover. How do you know that? <laughs> oh, I read, I do my homework. But that's pretty amazing, isn't it? You were modeling, you've modeled a lot. Yeah, I was on the cover of Playboy magazine, the first Asian woman like from the Orient ever, you know. That's fantastic, was, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Hugh Hufner, I, I thank him. At that time also I did uh, George Lucas Star Wars. At that oh, time that? it was kind of controversial. But I really, really appreciate it. It's the two biggest icons that I, I worked with. And, and Playboy, I feel like uh, I think it's much better than even in the, like, for example, Vogue in style because we're women, that's for men. Exactly. I, I heard it's a Western man's Bible, it's a Playboy magazine. So I'm very proud and, and thankful. I wanted to end with that because I thought that was a fantastic thing to do, to be really an innovator in mm -hmm. so many different fields. Yeah, and for adventures. You to come, like, I'm like kind of an idol for the, it, a lot of... Uh, People from Asia, from China, who want yeah. to come to Hollywood. Right. And I think uh, I learned the beautiful two words is give and forgive. And also, I want to tell you, just go to my officialbiling.com. You will see my new Chinese film and a lot of American films going to come out. Gonna... Oh, 
when quickly. it's news. Quickly, I haven't told anybody. I just got an offer for a leading role in the film. It's based on a Nobel Prize winning novel. And the female lead was originally written for a white actress. I got the part. Yay! Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Bai Ling. And don't go away. We'll be right back with actress, director, Terry Hanauer. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're here taping at the Hollywood Museum, which is our studio. We love it here. Um, our guest, a native of Toronto, actress, director, Terry Hanauer, graduated with a degree in theater arts from York University. Her interest in storytelling led her to be accepted at the prestigious AFI Directing Workshop for Women. And in fact, her film that she made there, Replacing Flow, is that right? Recycling Flow. Recycling Flow. We didn't replace her, right? Recycling <laughs> Flow went on to Cannes. Tell us a little bit about that. Was that the beginning of your directing uh, work? Yeah, kind of. I mean, before that, I'd been told by, I, I was also a photographer, so everybody that right. I photographed actually right. said, you really should direct because they felt so comfortable and having been an actress I was able to really communicate it's like my first language with actors did you t did did photography come right at the same time as acting was it like a career well actually I it was a career it came after um, my acting came first like since uh -huh. I was four years old my love of it <laughs> and then uh, photography in college at York University in Toronto and um, it was definitely my acting and my photography were how I made money here. They were. Yeah. So both. when so so when you went to AFI, did you write? Did, do you have to write what you're going to film? Well, what actually, you're going to direct? Yeah. I mean, you have to submit a fifteen. Then it was a fifteen-page short film, and I adapted a, a short story called Recycling Flow. It's Peter Lefcourt's short story. Peter Lefcourt, a great yes. playwright, great a great playwright. writer, a wonderful author of many books. Yes, fantastic. And, and your great, husband? A great husband. <laughs> and a great husband. Truly a but, great husband. But he wrote it? He wrote the short story. Oh, he did? Yeah, and I was in class at the time. I was studying with Milton Katsalas, a wonderful, oh. wonderful... We love Milton. He was on the show. We're oh, so right. happy that he was on the show. Oh, yeah. He's a mensch and a mentor. Right. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we... Um, I kind of took a look at this short story and I found a monologue in there that I wanted to direct and at, at that time I got into AFI um. and I thought, oh, I can really expand on that. So that was my And short what's film. the story? Of Recycling Flow. It's about a guy who goes to a party in downtown LA, very hot party. He meets a very hot girl and within about <laughs> 10 seconds they're having very hot sex. <laughs> and uh, she moves in and moves in with her dog named Flo, ah. a, a British bulldog. And about a week later, she moves out, but she leaves Flo with oh, the guy. Oh. So he's now stuck with this fabulous dog that has a skin condition, bad breath. He doesn't know what to do with Flo. And that's the idea of recycling Flo. It's very funny, and it's very dog positive. We love dogs. How long was the film? Uh, 14 minutes. So what do you do with a short film like that? I know the, the director's workshop for women, they... they have a lot of short films. Where do they play? It's a very good question. Um, there are short film festivals, and this one did extremely well. And then AFI, actually, and I think that there's a distributor. It's actually been sold, and it, it's made some money. But no. A oh, short it does? It can make money? Yeah, I mean, like, we're talking, minutes? we're talking, like, 15 minutes worth of money. You know, <laughs> if you're going to shop for 15 minutes, right. that's... Uh, but, but still... That, where do they show it in the regular theaters? I don't. Or on campuses? I or? think on campuses. There's some cafes and clubs. Oh, like that. In I Europe see. that do that. But really, a short film is really um, to help you decide if you want to do a feature. That's what I was going to ask you. Where does yeah. it go from there? Did it go from any yes. anywhere? It yes. Did. Actually, uh, <laughs> I directed my first feature film called oh. Sweet Talk, and um, it's it was originally a play that was adapted by oh. Peter Lefcourt and it's uh, being released this fall. Natalie Z is the star. She's in The Following. She was uh, in um, Justified. So what happens then with recycling? Does that turn into a full-length film? 
I actually do have a script of that, so if, if in the future if somebody wants oh, that, but that's not, I mean, right now the focus is Sweet Talk, also another project that I'm involved with, it's called Champagne, and it's about three women who are tired of being tamed by life, and they, they're in their 40s and 50s, and they end up uh, taking an impromptu trip to Vegas where they reignite their inner wildness. You're kidding. Who yeah. wrote that? I did. You wrote it. Yeah. You're, you've learned too much from your husband, Peter. I have These wild lot. women That's parties. Right. right. Well, I'm the wild woman. Oh, you're the Las Vegas? <laughs> yes, yes. But right now, what's really exciting is the play. You've worked as an actress, though, yeah. with other directors, uh, and, and you were... Uh, in the Rapture. Yes, Michael Tolkien. Yes. Do you know How Michael? No. But, I mean, of course we know. That was a fantastic, yeah. weird film. Very fantastic. Very weird. It was, it was, um, it was great, actually. The experience <laughs> I, I of know. it. He, yeah. Did you, you were on location? We were on that film. It was like location, all parts of outside of L.A., you know. That so. was on location? Yeah, kind of Cause location. Because you live in L.A. now. Yeah. Do you like being here from Canada? I love being here. I mean, I love having been from Canada, but I, I do truly love being here because the mindset is very open and everything is Different, possible. Isn't it? it is. It what is. about TV? You've done a lot of TV too, big roles. Yeah, yeah, I did <laughs> a lot of TV. And the last several things. Um, like you, you've been Seinfeld. Seinfeld. And, yeah, and L on NYPD. Yes and Without a Trace, and it was the last couple of roles where I was playing crying mothers a lot, and I thought, you know, I'm tired of being a crying mother. But, you, but those were good roles for you, weren't they? They're great roles, and I love them, but it was kind of, I thought, I want to do a little bit more where I'm in control. And But that's what a director wants to do, that's right? right? That's right. Director right. wants to be in, you've been on the arena stage. Yep. And Mark Taper. What'd you do at Mark Taper? We the, love that stage. The Immigrant. Oh, that was wonderful. Did you see that? Yeah, Mark yes. Harlick wrote it. Yeah. We love that stage. Yeah. And Arena? The same play. Oh, you took it from Yeah, I it was see. brought there. I see, see. Okay, so we're at the stage now. Yes. Wasn't that great, the way I got into the <laughs> stage? <laughs> I'm very impressed. <laughs> and you're directing this wonderful play that I think you stop, the lights change, and the whole play changes, and yeah. you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Tell us the name and who wrote it. Sure. Um, it's called The Assassination of Leon Trotsky, a comedy. Uh -huh. You and have to add a comedy, right? Yes, you have to, because would you go to see a play if it was just called The Assassination of Leon Trotsky? I don't know. I might, because I love that area, and yeah. I loved being in Mexico City, and Frida, and Diego. Yes. So I, I would have, that, that's what drew me. Oh, good. So. Oh, good, good. And then a comedy threw me. Yes, it drew you and then it threw you. <laughs> it threw, right. <laughs> um, it's a really interesting play because uh, Peter Lefcourt wrote it. I do do other things that Peter doesn't do, by the way. I did Collected Stories last summer by Donald Margulies, and we were invited oh. and are invited to the uh, Edinburgh Fringe Festival. So the wonderful He's a cast, wonderful writer. Phenomenal. I know. Truly, yeah. His work is great. So we're doing that at the end of the summer. But um, this is uh, a very funny, odd play, and it's about really these actors who kind of revolt in the same way that Leon Trotsky revolted. And um, things Oh, that's the change. actors are revolting in the same... I see. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. So what happens? Tell us the, the story is he's come to live with Diego and Frida. Leon Trotsky actually did in the late 30s. Right. And... Um, he was exiled, and so he and his wife came in in true life. Uh, Leon Trotsky had an affair with, with Frida Kahlo. She had lots of affairs with, with men and with women. Right. And, um, but what's interesting about this particular one is that it's really the affair that takes place is between Diego Rivera, who also <laughs> had affairs, and um, But with Trotsky's women, mostly. All, all, oh, with all, everybody? No, only women. Only women. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, and so he has an affair with Natalia Sadova oh, right. Trotsky. Trotsky's wife, of course. Right. So we've got that. Okay, so we're going along. We're in the Casa Azul. Are we in the Casa Azul? Yes. Uh, basically, she lived in the same house that her, was her father's house, and the Casa Azul was painted yes. blue after Trotsky 
actually after was, that. Yes. And so, there's still bullet holes and different things yes. in there right now yes. in Mexico City. Right. We love that. Yeah, it's beautiful. She, she had a great recipe book. Did you ever see Frida Kahlo's recipe book from the no, but Casa? I've, I've heard about it. Got to get it. It's really good. But so how how did this story take place? Tell us about the sets. The okay. costuming. Great. Aren't they beautiful? Yes. Yes. Uh, Joel David is the set designer, and his one of his specialties is that era, which is 1940s oh. Mexico. Uh -huh. And um, Kristen Anaker is the costume designer, and she, she's like a genius. So she basically sewed oh, she did? most of what you saw. It, so I it, love it when she puts the flower up isn't here. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah, it's yes, really good. yes. And we have a choreographer. Tracy Silver is a choreographer, and we have a fight director Mike Mahaffey so so you don't have to do all that as the director <laughs> I chose all those people, I see okay so. but but so you know how do you move them around the stage everything everything is directed by me so all the staging is you know you be there you go up there at that point and I knew that I wanted a, a dance so I said I want it to be lyrical and romantic and mm -hmm. sexy so those are the so it's the director basically has the vision of different different plays and it's so brilliantly written i don't know how he did this interdance yes because they all weave together yes and yet and it's probably your directing well it's both <laughs> <laughs> now that he's not here it's, it's probably your directing so where did you find the trotsky character he's such a great actor the actor joel sweeta uh, we uh, auditioned people, and I know Joel actually from class. He and I studied with, uh, with Milton together. And Michael Donovan is the casting director. Oh, I know. Michael Donovan's been on the... He's great. He's been on our show. Oh, good. He's wonderful. And for, and Diego looks just like Diego. Yes, that's Joe Garcia. Um, he dyed his hair black. He's wearing a big he's tummy. He's wearing a piece, yeah. Yes, he's wonderful. And uh, Frida's played by Muriel Zucker, who is actually from Chile. So oh. she... Uh, but. She's also raised here, so she actually is. The thing about Frida is she was pretty much bound to her wheelchair. Well, she actually uh, walked a lot as well. So, Did she? Yeah, in real life, yeah, because uh, we actually saw real film footage of her and Diego, and uh, she mm. would go and sit in it when she was in pain, but she did actually walk and danced. So how much time did you spend in Mexico? We were there on a trip about about two weeks. Did it help? Oh yeah, well we, we were there way before Peter even had this idea. But but it, it, oh, yes. you need now, to be on and yes, yes, on, yes, yes. on in the area of what you're writing about? Yeah, I think so and then reading books and then watching films about Frida and, and Diego and Trotsky so it was such a rich period. And was Trotsky shot or stabbed? Is he, he was, stabbed in the play? He was stabbed. In real life, he was actually stabbed by a, an Alpenstock. Which oh, he it, was stabbed? That's all true, yes. He was not in their actual house. Uh, he came to live with them, and then Frida and Leon had an affair, and then <laughs> he moved out with his wife, and then in his own place, uh, this guy from Catalon, from Spain, Mercader, he actually came and pretended that, that he was there to write his memoirs, and he actually was sent by oh, Stalin right. to assassinate him, and he was assassinated. He was. Yeah, and it was, uh, and then I, I read some of Natalia Sadova's, his wife's um, writings afterwards. It was, he, he was, al he stayed alive for about 16 hours afterwards, but he finally, one of his last words was, you know, they got me, they got me. They got him. Yeah. And Natalia was there. She was there, she and then she there. ended up staying on and, you know, being his spokesperson in a way for a while. Well, it's a fascinating story, and it's presented in a fascinating Great. way, and it's Thank on you. the stage at the Odyssey Theater. The Odyssey Theater, yes. And, and I don't know how long it'll be running, but what, where do you think it'll go from here? We had some Russian people come opening night because they saw the title and they said, Leon Trotsky, I'm coming. <laughs> they said this would be great in Moscow. Oh, yes, so, it's a trip know, to here. It's a trip to Moscow, and then maybe somebody will say, oh, this would be great in Mexico City. That's so, where I would think it would be yes, great. Yes, oh. yes, yes. So wherever we're open. Well, frequent flyer miles. Definitely. Here we come. <laughs> nice to meet you, Terry. Really lovely to meet you. And thanks for being with us. And Thank keep you. writing to J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1 at AOL.com. And we'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles.